Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining today's webinar where we're going to talk about how to invest in tax liens in your self-directed IRA. I'm Renika Lightborn. I'm delighted to have our special guest, um, the Chief Training Officer for the Georgia Tax Lien Bootcamp, Ms. Samaris Hodges, who's actually filling in for Ms. Chantel Owens today. Um, so Maurice, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to, to be with us. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, absolutely. Uh, so Maurice is going to give us kind of an insight in, in how you can go about investing it in tax liens. Uh, take a look at the Georgia tax lien process when it comes to investing and, and also to just understanding the different interest rates as it relates to the different states and how you can absolutely go about owning real estate free and clear using an IRA or I'm sorry, using a tax lien. Um, but before I turn it over, I do want to kind of give you just a an overview of what self-directing is, some of the options available to you, and also highlight a specific investment strategy that a lot of uh, tax lien investors look to utilize uh, with the checkbook control feature. If you have any questions, um, definitely, uh, we're gonna carve out maybe 10, um, 10 minutes prior to at, at the end um, to answer for Maurice to answer those questions for you. If you have any self-directed related questions, feel free to, to put those in the chat box and I'll answer those throughout. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, my name is Renika Lightborn. I'm one of the business development specialists here at Advanto. I'm also an active self-directed IRA investor. Um, I actually am personally interested in tax and investing. I actually had the opportunity to, I think about a year ago, uh, take the, the course from um, the Georgia Tax Lane Bootcamp. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. If you have any questions or you want to know more about self-directing, um, definitely feel free to reach out to me. You can call me, you can email me, or you can visit our website at advantaira.com. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, at Advanta, we don't give any tax, legal, or investment advice. Uh, we also don't endorse any particular products. We're not affiliated with any companies. Um, all of the information that we do provide to you is just more so for educational purposes. So as always, you're encouraged to do your own due diligence. Uh, feel free to confer with your uh, professional team, whether that's a CPA, an attorney, or you know, a financial advisor. So just a little bit about Advanta and who we are. So we're one of the, the nation's leading self-directed IRA administrators. Uh, we've been in the business for, for nearly uh, 20 years, working with uh, investors to be able to use qualified retirement funds uh, to invest in the likes of tax liens that we're gonna talk about today. Um, we do have well over a billion dollars in asset under our, under our administration um, as we look to work, to work with clients nationwide. At Advanta, we um, take great pride in separating ourselves from our competitors by providing our clients that concierge style service, meaning you have a, a dedicated account manager who's going to be with you for the life of your account with Advanta, and also providing you an educational platform um, that brings you um, high quality educational tools like recurring webinars that features the likes of um, experts like Mr. Hodges to tell you about some of the options available to you. So exactly what is a self-directed IRA? Uh, self-directed IRA just simply means that you get to uh, decide what is it that you want to invest in. Uh, you get control over the investment um, decisions, you get control over your retirement funds. Uh, you can use those funds to invest in and pretty much a, a near limitless um, list of opportunities like real estate. Uh, whether it's for a fix and flip or it's a, a, a rental a property, you can certainly, um, like we're going to cover today, uh, use it to invest in tax liens. Or maybe your interest is, you know, having your IRA act as the, the bank and invest in notes and mortgages or invest in a startup company. Uh, really, you have a, a long list of options available to you when, it looks, when you're looking to, to self-direct. So why do people choose to self-direct? Uh, you may look to self-direct for, for any number or combination of reasons. Um, if you don't want to take out a, you know, a personal loan or tap into your personal savings, and if you have money that's just sitting idle in an old 401k or just you know, sitting in, in an existing IRA and you feel like you can you know, get better returns, you can absolutely look to move those funds into a self-directed um, account so you can take a, a better advantage of that. Or maybe you're tired of the ebbs and flows of the stock market. A lot of investors look to, to, to self-direct because they have the opportunity to invest in the likes of real, uh, real estate, specifically tax liens, where you can either get interest returns or you can look to take, um, eventually take possession of a property where we know it always holds some value. And then thirdly, the actual tax benefits, having those rents or profits flow back into your IRA account 
at tax free or tax deferred, just depending on the type of account that you have. In terms of the different plans that you can look to self-direct, um, simply you can self-direct a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Um, if you have children, you can certainly look to, to self-direct an educational savings account or an HSA for, to cover medical-related expenses. If you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, you can certainly take advantage of it and, and self-direct a SEP, simple or solo 401k, uh, which offers you great flexibility. Or if you, again, have an old 401k or, you know, whether that's a, TSP or, you know, 457, you can look to, to self-direct those type of accounts. Uh, the main thing that you want to focus or remember is, you know, the different annual contribution relating to the different accounts. And then, of course, with the Roth IRA, it being tax-free at retirement. So you can absolutely open up your account and make the investment directly within your IRA at Advance, who are well-known in the industry to be, you know, pretty responsive to, to help you, uh, to help facilitate that transaction. A lot of real estate investors, however, specifically um, tax land investors, like to utilize what's called checkbook control. Sometimes you may hear it referred to as an LLC IRA. And this is um, more so when your IRA actually owns an LLC, um, you get to act as manager of that LLC. As the manager, you have the authority to, you know, write a check, pay a bill, sign a contract. So if you intend to use the LLC feature, definitely confer with your professional team, work with your CPO and attorney who can assist you with setting it up um, properly. So in, in terms of using the LLC feature, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, first and foremost, you do have to you know, establish and open up your account with us, fund your account with us. Uh, with the checkbook control feature, again, we don't set that up for you. That's something that you can do yourself or have your uh, professional advisor assist you with but you do get control to decide what state you want to set up that LLC in. You get to decide what is it, uh, the name you want to name that LLC, and you can also act as manager for the LLC. So it has to be manager managed, or you can have someone else designated as manager. Uh, the actual um, main thing that we'll need is the actual operating agreement, and that operating agreement is going to show that your IRA or your solo 401k is the actual owner of that LLC. And that lets the IRS know, hey, don't come after you personally. You don't own it. You control it. You don't own it. It's actually owned by your IRA, which is a tax sheltered account. Advanced as the administrator for the IRA will sign that operating agreement document on behalf of the IRA. And when it comes to self-directing, you know, you know you're always in control. So nothing happens until you say it does. Um, but you do ultimately have to read and approve, give your consent. Uh, once you do that, Advanced will issue a check in the name of the uh, from the IRA in the name of the LLC provide you that check and now you have the ability to go to your preferred banking institution so whether it's a credit union or it's a large financial institution or it's a you know just a small community bank you can open up a, a new bank account specifically for the LLC deposit those funds and now you have checkbook control to where you have the authority as the manager to write a check pay a bill sign a contract the key thing is you want to remember same rules apply you're not commingling any of those funds. Money leaving that account, money coming into that account is specifically for your retirement, not to be used personally, but in terms of moving forward and making investments, because you control the funds, you can go to a tax sale auction, you win a bid, you have the ability to pretty much recover the expenses on directly from the bank account. And also moving forward, if you get the interest returns, interest returns can flow back into the account or if you end up with a property, and you decide to do turn it into a rental or do a fix and flip, the profits from that investment will flow back into that bank account. In terms of getting started with us, we really streamline that process to keep it as simple as possible for our clients. You can do that in three simple steps. Uh, step one, just going through and opening up your account by filling out the application. Uh, most of our application can be done electronically. You have someone to walk you through that process, answer any questions that you may have. Uh, step two is actually funding your account. Again, if you have an old 401k, you can roll those over. If you have an existing IRA, you can do a transfer. It's no personal tax liabilities to you. Or third, you can make a cash contribution based on the, um, the type of account that you have in terms of the, the limits, the annual limits, um, or you can do a combination of all three. And then finally, start investing. What is it that is of interest to you? Do you want to invest in tax liens? Do you want to you know, be the bank and invest in notes and mortgages or you know, act as a, a private lender or do it to make venture partnerships. You have control. You get to decide what is it that works best for you. 
Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it over to Tamori so he can give us an, a, a good overlook, overview of, of tax land investing. Awesome. Thank you very kindly, Renika. I appreciate it. Let me uh, let me show my screen here. All right. So you guys can see me okay, Renika? Yes, I sure can. Awesome. Uh, thank you for having me once again, Ivana and Renika. I appreciate you guys allowing allowing us some time to talk to your investors about tax liens. Uh, once again, my name is Maurice Hodges. Um, I also go by Mo. Um, and I'm the chief training officer for the Georgia Tax Lien Boot Camp. Um, I will interact with you all today, um, and we're going to do that via the chat. So if you guys are sitting at your computer or you have access to your chat, um, please drop a note inside and let me know. First off, can you hear me okay? Everybody's good on volume? I want to make sure I can see your chats as well. Um, so very excited that you all took out the time to uh, come and hear a little bit about tax liens. Um, I'll go ahead and jump right in. Let's go ahead and knock out this legal disclaimer. Um, the material that's contained in this presentation, whether verbal or written, does not constitute any legal advice. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not an accountant, so I can't offer legal or financial advice. Any information that's presented is from personal experience and is meant for educational and entertainment purposes, purposes only. An attorney accountant client relationship is not presumed or intended by receipt or review of our presentation. And this information should not ever replace informed counsel when specific tax lien investor uh, related guidance is needed. And you guys don't have permission to record today's session. And we do not guarantee results. Uh, your results may vary based on the amount of work and effort that you actually exert. I also like to ask that you connect with us on social media. We are on all of the major platforms, Facebook, Meetup, Instagram, YouTube. Please, please follow us. We certainly do appreciate all of the support. All right. So here we go, Renika. We are going to do an actual mock auction for you guys. Just want to get your, your, um, the juice is flowing for exactly how tax liens work. During the auction process, that happens to be one of the most exciting parts of investing in tax liens. It's actually going to the auction, going to the county courthouse steps, and actually bidding on properties. This is the culmination of all of the work that you put in as a tax lien investor actually going to the auction and bidding on properties with the intentions of winning. So we like to give you guys a demonstration of how this works. So what I'll need to, what I'm going to do is actually be your auctioneer. And when you're live on the county courthouse steps, um, the auctioneer is going to uh, come out and set the ground rules. Generally, one is all of the bids need to be in increments of at least $100. So for instance, if someone bids $2,000, please don't bid 2001. All right. So not the price is right. Um, you'll need to bid in increments of at least $100. Did I just did I just date myself by bringing up the price is right? I think so. But at any rate, um, and then the auctioneer is going to go off of what he or she hears. So since we won't be doing this uh, by audio, whatever you put into the chat will be the will, will, will be the amount that Renika calls out as the winning bid, and so on until we come up to an amount where no one else is bidding. All right. So. With that being said, I am going to auction off our very first property of the day. All right. So, Renika, I'm going to need you to help me out on the chat. Just call out the ones that are coming out, and I'm going to repeat it too. And as they come in, the highest bidder is going to win. So, I need everybody out there to be ready. If you're on dial up, you're going to have to put that in faster because it's not going to come through as fast. But here we go. 10,000. One parcel of land known as 11454-22938, also known as 1242 Rock Springs Road. Do I have a starting bid of $7,023.67? I got 10,100. 10,100 going once. 13,000. 13,000 going once. 13,000 going twice. 14,000. 14,000. 15, there we go. 
15,000 going once. 15,100. 15,100? 15,100. 15,200. 15,500. 15,500. Uh-oh, somebody out there say they're going to get this sucker. Let's go. 15,500 going once. 156. 15, 15, six going once. 20, we got a 20,000. 20,000, we ain't playing no more. 20,000 going once. 20,000 going twice. So, 20,000. That, Renika. So, we actually have one that came in at 21,000, but I think the 20,000 got it before. Ah, and you know what, guys? That's exactly how auctions work. So, you have to be prepared. You have to be you have to be on your game. You got to know exactly what you plan to do, because when you're live on the county courthouse steps, the auctioneer is not going to go back and say, oh, I forgot you, young lady. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you or I didn't see you or young man. You look real nice. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. So you have to be ready and prepared. So thank you for that. But now I got a question for you guys. How did it feel? bidding at your first tax lien mock auction. How did that feel? And be honest with me. Drop your answers in the chat. Renika, call out some of them for me. Well, how'd you actually feel about it? Okay. Nervous, exciting, oh, empowering, unsure. Okay. Responses. <laughs> All right. Fun. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Thank you for that. So, we like to ask that because all of those feelings are legitimate, right? Little nerves, maybe not having the right information. Somebody may have said, you know, I feel like I'm just shouting out numbers. This is why obtaining the exact um, education that you need in order to be successful is so incredibly important as it relates to tax lien investing. You want to make sure when you're on accounting courthouse steps that you know exactly what you should and should, should be doing. So. Um, here, I want you guys to see a short video clip of one of our students who actually won this bid, but I want you to look at her demeanor and, and the way she actually goes about bidding for this property. Here we go. Hello. 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 she was extremely confident in what she was doing. She had her papers. She was um, prepared. She knew exactly what her game plan was. Um, and even if you notice, she was actually getting up before the auctioneer was even finished so that she knew she had won based on the gentleman that was actually bidding against her. So that's the type of confidence that you need and will have after getting the proper education um, to learn how to do this correctly. So Love MJ's story, young, um, and getting started building generational wealth at an early age. All right. So we're here today because of this little house right here, this house. So I'm going to tell us a quick little story about why that one particular house is incredibly important as to why we're here today. So this is a story about someone who actually started out their work history by spending time in the U.S. Army. Uh, back in 1992, this person enlisted and served time in the, um, um, in the armed forces and then spent a couple years in corporate America and said, nah, this is not quite for me. Um, and this person also knew that real estate would certainly be a part of their future. And of course, we 
we all know that most of millionaires and billionaires, they either started out with real estate or real estate is part of their investment portfolio. Uh, so this person is not nothing different. I'm getting a lot of feedback in the in the background. Is that is, is that something that could be muted or something, Renika? Uh, let me try. All right, thank you. I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. I'm, I'm I think I'm hearing. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Um, so this person got started in real estate back in 2001 as a full-time investor, and by 2006 had acquired 17 rental properties. And just to make it short and sweet. This person was actually doing really, really, really well until the market crash in 2007. You see those houses that this person had back in 2001 from, 2000, from 2001 to 2006 were actually acquired by having adjustable rate mortgages. That's a totally different class of its, of its own right there. So in 2007, when the market crashed, those homes with those adjustable rate market uh, mortgages also crashed. So now this person um, pretty much was starting from ground, zero, from ground zero. But then in 2008, when things still had not um, ironed out for this person, this one home came into play in a very, very big way. This home actually went into the tax sale and was sold to someone else on the county courthouse steps. So the silver lining here is that this home was sold at auction to a tax lien investor for $2,100. And the taxes that was owed on this home back in 2008 was that $2,100. But the person that owned this home actually had a mortgage on this house for $139,900. Now I see you guys, I know you guys see on your screen that the original mortgage for this home was 91,000, but hey, this person was an investor. So this, per this, this person took out the equity from that home and actually reinvested it into real estate, which took the mortgage up to 139.9. So the reason why I'm sharing that with you, and I'm gonna talk about this more in just a moment, is that here in the state of Georgia, we are known as a right to redeem state. So if a home is sold at auction for the back taxes owed, here in Georgia, because we are a redeemable tax deed state, the original homeowner has the opportunity to get that home back within 365 days. So the person that owned this home exercised their right to redeem it and had to repay that $2,100, which was what the amount was when it was sold at auction, plus a 20% interest penalty. And I'm going to talk about that more later. But for, for this story, I want you guys to picture this. This homeowner had a mortgage of $139,900 for this home. The tax lien investor bought this house for $2,100 on a county courthouse steps and actually put themselves in a position to own this property free and clear. We're going to talk about that. I'm using this to get your, to get your attention. This home actually belongs to our CEO and founder, Chantel Owens. And before she started investing in tax liens, she said, you know what? I will take whatever money I have to start investing in tax liens because I own this home for 139.9, somebody paid 2,100 for it. I gotta learn how to do that. So that's where Georgia tax lien came into play. And she said, not only have I now rebounded, but now I have the opportunity to teach others what I've learned um, throughout my course of investing in real estate. And that is, I'm going to now um, take this portfolio and the, and the learnings that I've uh, obtained by going through this process and teach others how they too can take advantage um, of this secret billion dollar industry. And now our mission is to help 1,000 families create generational wealth through tax lien investing. And we're pretty much on our way. We have we have over 900 students that we've taught since we launched the Georgia Tax Lien Bootcamp. All right. So to get your attention one more time, 
I have a check on your screen for $144,283. Let me explain where this check came from. This home was owned by one of our investors who actually purchased this house at a tax sale. The initial investment in the tax sale was $4,500. Now this home did not look like this when it was uh, when it came through the auction. The total investment to bring this home up to look the way they wait the way that it does in this photo is six to four thousand five hundred. This property is a buy and hold property, so it was rented out, and the proceeds from that rental agreement over time was sixty thousand dollars. And even though this home was a buy and hold strategy for this uh, for this investor, because of the circumstances involved, and I won't get into that. They actually sold this home to the person that was renting it. They did it last year and walked away at closing with $144,283. All right, so now let's start to talk about how you guys can utilize tax lien investing um, to diversify your portfolio. But first, let's understand this concept of tax liens. Tax liens are created for one reason and one reason only, and that is to recover past due taxes that's owed to the county. See, it all starts with the county government. First, well, really, it starts at the state level, but the state says these things are too big for us to manage. We're going to give uh, certain powers to the local governing bodies and have them to take care of it. So now it filters down to the actual county government. Tax revenue, property tax revenue, is the primary source of revenue for every county government. They utilize those proceeds to take care of our water systems, the police department, the county roads, churches, fire departments, schools, everything that pretty much allows us to exist as a, um, as a coherent society is financed through those proceeds coming from property taxes. So what happens then when property taxes are not paid? You guessed it. That revenue is now null and void with the county. The tax commissioner, he or she, has a legal obligation to collect those past due, uh, past due property taxes. So they have unprecedented power to actually levy any parcel and then sell that parcel on the county courthouse steps to recover those past due property taxes. That's how tax liens actually work. So let's take a, let's take a closer look at that. The original homeowner will receive a notice in the mail saying that, hey, your taxes are past due. You need to pay them. That homeowner then does not pay their bill. So by law, the county government must collect those property taxes. So they will then, the tax commissioner will levy that property or that parcel and then sell it at public auction to the highest bidder. Now, from an investment standpoint, why is this process so um, important to you? This is it. Tax liens are considered first position liens. So what does that mean? Earlier, I told you guys that Georgia is a right to redeem state. I'm gonna tie that in here. Tax liens are first position liens, meaning that the mortgage company that has a lien against that property, they are now behind you on that deed. The IRS, the exact same thing. What about the roofer who put a roof on that home and also put a lien against the property? They are now all second behind that person that owns that tax lien, all right? We're gonna talk about that in just a second. So who exactly invests in this billion dollar secret industry? Banks invest in tax liens. And not just any bank, the big boys also invest in tax liens. The reason why they invest in tax liens? This is the reason why they invest in tax liens. 
These are the rates that you can achieve by investing in tax liens based on the state and based on how they're set up. Now, earlier I, I explained that Georgia is a right to redeem state. We have what we call redeemable tax deeds. That means that the homeowner can get the home back if they pay the back taxes, plus the percentage that you see on this chart, like here in Georgia, it says that there's a 20% interest penalty for, um, for tax deeds, for a redeemable tax deed. Therefore, you go to the county and the back taxes are $2,000, like the example we did earlier during the mock auction. And that $2,000 gets up to $5,000 at the auction. That's the amount that the original homeowner must pay to you plus an additional 20% if they want to get that property back. If they choose not to, guess what? You get the property. You can now start the foreclosure process after that 365 days to own that property free and clear. And I like to show this chart because a lot of us, I'm not sure you know, about you guys, but I'm not from Georgia. I'm originally from Jacksonville, Florida, even though I live here in Kennesaw. But if I look at Florida, they have an 18% um interest penalty all right so the banks invest in tax liens the number one strategy for banks is um insurance the number two investment strategy for banks is tax liens jp morgan chase was quoted as saying tax liens is a billion dollar industry daily that's, let that soak in. A billion dollar industry daily. There's over 200,000 counties throughout the United States. So they invest in tax liens because of these types of results that you can gain from investing in tax liens. But I ask you something. You can put this in the chat if you like. How much are the banks giving you on your interest bearing checking or savings account? How much are they giving you? 0. 0.001, 3, 2%, if that. Some of us don't even have interest bearing accounts. So they're taking your money, our money, and then investing it in tax liens. And this is the reason why, based on the returns that you can get from tax liens. And this, you can Google this, uh, this chart and you can find that out, um, out online, okay? So just want to paint that picture. And this is what really, I, I, first off, I've been investing in tax liens for a little over three years um, under tutelage of Chantel Owens, of course. And this is the one part of the presentation that when I sat like you are, that really got my attention as to what I needed to do in terms of pot, uh, potentially investing in tax liens. All right. So what is one of the biggest impediments that most people have in getting started in real estate? Yep, you guessed it, money. Let's look at what $2,337.48 got one of our investors. Right now, you're looking at this home and there's some before pictures at the bottom of the page there to show you how it looked before it looked like the picture above. But the initial investment is $2,337. The additional investment to get the house to, to look the way it does in this photo was $12,000. The gross yearly um, income that comes in from this property is $30,000. Now, I know I have some math wizards out there. First off, this property um, had the original mortgage wiped away. And this home is actually a boarding home for uh, a rooming home, I'm sorry, for, um, for veterans. So it is actually rented out per room. But what's unique about tax liens is that you have options of what you want to do with the property after it's been purchased um, for pennies on the dollar. When you buy a home for the amount that they go for in, um, in tax sales, you have the ability to flex exactly how you would like to um, take advantage of that property, all right? And here's a copy of the receipt that's housed at the, uh, at the county. And I wanna draw your eyes to the red box. It says the highest and best bid was 2,337.48. Right above that, it says beginning bid was 2,337.48. So what does that mean? That means that nobody 
had the auction bid it against this person. That happens often. All right. So no competition. And that person walked away with this house for two thousand three thirty seven forty eight. All right. So what does that mean for you as an investor? What could owning real estate free and clear actually mean? How much income do you actually need in order to retire? And how many properties would it would it take in order for you to actually meet those goals? We'll talk about that. So let's take a look at this home. This townhouse, this corner lot townhouse, went to Heather High Better, we'll call our student that, for $1,000 at the tax sale. The purchase date for this property was September of last year. The as is value for this $1,000 paid for property is $50,000. The ARV or after repair value for this home was $75,000. So there's two possibilities that can come from this. With that investor being um, an interest investor, the total profit that will come from this property in the state of Georgia is $200. Remember I told you that in Georgia, in order to redeem, there's a 20% interest penalty that must be paid to the highest bidder. Or property investor, this person has the opportunity to own this property free and clear. So what does it look like in order for you to take your investment um, funds and actually retire in five years or less? Let's say in year one, you purchase four tax lien properties at the tax sale. In year two, remember you can't do anything with the property for 365 days because of Georgia law, right? We are a redeemable tax deed state. You purchase two more properties the following year, but now you're starting to rehab property uh, process or putting that house out to be um, rented. You're doing that coming up in year two. So now the process is beginning to snowball. Now you're renting the four tax lien properties that you bought in year one and year three, and you're beginning to rehab the properties that you bought in year two. So now you own six homes, free and clear as of year three, and the buy and hold scenario goes as such. The income that's coming in per property that you have is $1,500 a month for a grand total of $9,000. And the monthly expenses, we like to say around 25%, you're going to have to hold back as far as upkeep and, um, and any expenses related to the property or owning the property. So your monthly net rental income is around six to seven hundred dollars. Now, this does not include any rehab costs, but this shows you how the process builds on top of each other year after year as a tax lien investor. Even if it took some of us 10 years to get here, six to seven hundred dollars is life changing money when you consider the amount of effort that goes into maintaining those. You do the work once and you continue to reap the benefits of that work. We like to call that generational wealth, something that you can pass down from generation to generation. We can't do that with our jobs, right? All right, we like to put this here. This is um, an article of a gentleman who bought a villa in Florida and thought that he was buying a luxury unit for $9,100. And we talked about Google just a moment ago. If you were to Google this article and you were on the fence about tax lien investing, you might even decide, you know what? <laughs> I don't think I want to do that after, after reading this article. But one of the things that we stress about education, you have to know exactly what you are doing when you are investing your money. But by the same token, you have to understand what not to do. This gentleman bought what he thought were one of those two condos that you see in the rear. But actually what he bought was this strip of land that he's still in litigation now to try and get his money back for. Why? Because of the obvious. He cannot do anything with that strip of land. And now he's in a, a court battle with the city uh, that he is not going to win. Tax lien investors are, uh, have to understand buyer beware. So I think that we are just about um, out of time, but I want to make sure that you guys have 
the information in case you want to come to uh and take advantage of our curriculum our immersive four-day georgia tax lien boot camp will take place on october the 9th through the 11th and then on november the 3rd so if you would like to have more information about um, what it would take in order for you to uh, sign up for that you can visit us at registration at georgiataxleanbootcamp.com and if you like to have a copy of the slides that i that i presented to you guys today you can uh, get a copy of the slides from presentation at georgiataxleanbootcamp.com and while i answer a few questions i'll leave this slide up in case someone needs to get uh to get this information so with that renika i'll open up the lines and ask for your help and uh listen a few questions for us before we uh bring this to a close yeah, absolutely. Uh, great information. I do have a, a list of questions for you. Uh, the first one I have is, uh, can you explain the difference between a deed and um, tax lien? So a tax lien is is more or less just a generic term that outlines, um, you know, what we do as tax lien investors. But it's actually broken down into tax lien certificates and tax deeds. And which, which one the state actually uses? Uh, depends on that state legislator. So here in Georgia, we have tax deeds, um, but they are considered redeemable tax deeds, which means that there's an opportunity for the original homeowner to get that property back uh, by paying what the tax lien investor paid at auction plus 20%, which is here in Georgia. I think Texas is, is like 25% um, that, that has to be paid if the original homeowner wants to get it back. So, um, in Georgia, when you actually win a property at, on the county courthouse steps, the receipt will actually say tax deed, but it is a redeemable tax deed. Okay, I have another question. Is Florida a redeemable, redeemable state as well? Um, I think Georgia, uh, Florida is a, is a um, I want to say certificate, but it, it is on that chart that we that, that we put out there, and that and that stuff you can actually find online. I'm not I'm not versed in all of the states. Okay, all right. Which, um, Question, if the delinquent tax is not paid by the homeowner in year one, who pays the foreclosure cost in getting the property and how long does that foreclosure take? Yeah, that, that, that foreclosure generally takes about 90 days and any anything that transpires after 365 days, the, the tax lien investor is responsible for that. So the tax lien investor would have to pay for that foreclosure process. Okay, uh, next question I have is, is Georgia a judicial state? I am not versed with that. I believe we are. Uh, that question has come up before, before, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, um, no worries. Next question is, so if I sit on the property, let's see. So if I sit on the house as is for a full year before I invest um, the fix of the money, can the owner buy it within a year or why would I have to put rent? Do I have to put renovation money in it? Like, can I rent it while I own it? I mean, while it's sitting? So with tax lien investing, you can't do anything with that property until it's been foreclosed on. So and that's for Georgia, can, correct? Yes, that's, well, yes, in Georgia, yes, that is correct. So you would have to foreclose on the property before you can do any business transaction with it, such as renting it out. So until the home, I, and I believe part of that question you just asked, until the home is foreclosed on, the original homeowner can exercise their right to redeem that property. Okay. Um, next question, I, I know you talked about the, um, with tax liens, you're in first position. So what happens, the question is, what happens with the mortgage? So what happens with the mortgage and anyone else that has um, an interest, a legal, a legal interest in that property? Uh, you have to foreclose on the mortgage company and everyone else. So the foreclosure process uh, takes care of that for you. Um, we highly recommend to all investors to ensure that they go to a um to a tax attorney and have them to actually do the foreclosure process for you to ensure it's done correctly okay i do have a question so um can do you 
can you um do you have to attend in person like can you attend uh, can you attend a, a live event so can the, you yeah so we are um practicing social distancing and abiding by the cdc guidelines as it relates to group gatherings so yes you can attend our boot camp completely virtual or a combination of in-person and virtual or completely in-person. If you uh, want more information on that, you can um, visit us at the information on the slide and we'll be more than happy to break that down for you. Um, but it will be a combination. So any part of the event that, uh, that you want to attend in person, we are practicing social distancing, which means uh, proper distance apart along with masks. Okay, perfect. Also, too, can I buy tax liens online? Yes, you can. I'm not sure all of the counties here in Georgia and how they are proceeding since COVID, um, but there are several counties that are having auctions online. Okay, I do have another question that just came in. Upon tax lien foreclosure, do the second or junior liens need to be paid off or settled before getting the property? Yes. Okay, um, another question is how many out of state investors have had, had success with your program? Um, quite a few. We have, I don't know a number offhand, but we have quite a few people that come to take our curriculum from out of state um, because of how user friendly the information is. That can be, you know, like I said, across state lines based on how that state is set up. Um, one of our team members. She's actually our director of marketing. She actually came to one of our camps and she's from Texas. So uh, we've had Texas, California, uh, Michigan, Florida, Alabama, you name it, we've had it. Okay, and then the final question is, where is the boot camp held here in Georgia, like in person? We, we, we don't have that location for the minute just yet. We have a few in the works. Um, we're waiting for some final numbers to come in for our registration. We will be practicing social distancing, so anyone that uh, that knows that they want to possibly come in person, we would need to know about that uh, fairly quickly because, again, the boot camp is going to start here in the next few days. So we want to make sure that we have everything set up with uh, social distancing and make sure we have a big, a big enough space. Okay, that covers all of the questions. Um, no, I really appreciate your time, um, you know, with your wealth of knowledge, knowledge sharing about how to go about investing in tax liens. Um, if you have any questions about um, self-directing or how you can go about, you know, using a, you know, check for control process to invest in tax liens, uh, again, definitely feel free to reach out to me. You can call me, email me, or you can visit our website at advantaira.com. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and close out today's webinar. Again, thank you all for attending. Thank you for having me again, Nick. We appreciate it. Oh, you most certainly welcome. Take care. Likewise.